came up from. I can't see you guys, by the way. You're, you're kind of in the dark, but it's okay. It's, uh, my name is Jeff Hughes. I came up uh, from Missoula because uh, I've had discussions with several fellow veterans over the past several months, many of whom are uh, worried about what may or may not be in that bill and how it may impact and make changes, uh, at least in the uh, Montana VA healthcare system. And uh, uh, what I'm getting at is um, veterans fill out a means test every year, which you may be aware of that. Um, I think the uh, limit, if, if you're already in the system, if your income level is uh, between $28,000 and $29,000 a year, um, you either have a low or no copay for your medications. And you can, for instance, go to Fort Harrison for, uh, for instance, uh, carpal tunnel surgery or something of that sort. Um, if you do not have private health insurance, if you're in uh, that predicament at that point in time, uh, you can, uh, through the Veterans uh, Health Care Coverage Program, you can, for instance, go to Fort, Har Fort Harrison and get that surgery free of charge. Veterans, including myself, were promised when you go in the military, you'll have two things, at least I was and certain others were, that you'll have the GI Bill and then you'll have access to hopefully good health care at low or no cost. Um, in the recent past, I had uh, a mother who passed away at the age of 91 recently who was blind and due to heart disease, she needed full-time care around the clock, seven days a week for four years. I threw down everything in my life to take care of her and at that point in time, I was in a situation where I had to resort to that kind of care. And Helen and I did have an outpatient surgery at that time for which there was no charge. Uh, I'm concerned if there's anything that I can pass on to veterans, say between the age of 20 and 65, who aren't on Medicare, who have gotten out, say for instance an Iraqi or Afghanistan veteran, who may be presently unemployed or who may have uh, income level that goes within the guidelines of the means test qualifications. Is there anything that you're aware of in that bill or that is going to happen in the future to jeopardize what we already have in Montana? Because at least veterans who are in the system, when you do get care, granted it's rational, and sometimes it takes quite a bit of time to get the care, for instance, in my case, between uh, needing a surgery and getting it was six months. But when I did get the care, it was very good. I agree that when you, with what you said, that uh, the quality of care in the state of Montana at Fort Harris is unsurpassed. Yeah. At least that's been my experience. Yeah. But I have fellow veterans who are, who are somewhat fearful right. that now they're going to have to, if their income level is below a certain amount, yep. Okay, because well, I'll, I'll answer it probably two, two different ways. That they're going to have to go out sure. and do that. We would like things to remain as they are. Or as better. There's any positive changes, mm -hmm. especially those which will impact the veteran financially to prevent you or she from getting care. Okay. okay. Um, first of all, I know my colleagues on both the Republican and Democrat side of the aisle. And they're very supportive of the Veterans Administration and the, and the health within veterans. So I would like to believe and suggest that there's nothing in this bill or any bill that we're going to pass that would jeopardize the service that you've got now. Now, you know, I, I, I never say that with an absolute because I'm continually disappointed in the federal government that, frankly, uh, you know, views things differently sometimes than we do or we think they ought to, like consumer product safety. Commission motorcycle example is an example. The Patriot Act, you know, the Patriot Act really is supposed to only go after the bad guys and is listening to transmission of bad guys calling good guys or bad, other bad guys in America. That's really what the Patriot Act is. And, and there should be no kicking in the doors of law abiding citizens. And about the time you suggest the Patriot Act was put in place for the right reasons, you find out the Justice Department has done dumb things. 
And so I, I never say with an absolute that I entirely trust our government, because you can't. Because there, there are people not necessarily with bad motives, they're just not very bright, or they lack common sense or a different sense than we do, but they have a preconceived philosophical position that they want to do something opposite of what we would normally expect them to do based upon the authorizing legislation. That's a long answer to say, trust but verify. Uh, that's what Ron Oregon did. So I, I, I trust people like Chet Edwards, who chairs the Appropriations Subcommittee on Veterans Affairs, which I used to be on, uh, but he may miss something as well. But what I can suggest is that when you have, have a taxpayer system, and then you expand into other areas where they haven't been involved in before, and it's going to take, take, take taxpayer dollars, and you've got a limited pot of money, then people start making prioritization based upon the amount of money that they've got. So they may come to the conclusion, we've got all these people over here, and there's 250 million people on this system, and there's only 50 million on this system, and we've done so well for them, let's take the excess dollars and put it over to the 250 million, and then all of a sudden, the minority starts losing, because you would then find yourself in a minority, because there aren't as many veterans as there are general population. So, you know, when, when you're talking about the limited opportunity of taxpayer revenue, which is how we have to survive, unless we build debt and we've got to quit doing that because pretty soon people aren't going to buy our debt, then I can't guarantee you're not going to be the victim of some loss as a result of some authorization and a redirection of more people dividing up your pie. So I will do the best I can. I will hopefully vote appropriately. I have to look to the veterans organizations to advise and counsel, and I better move on. Or I, I've got about 30 minutes left, and if I don't just start not answering questions and saying yes and no,